What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your boy, Mr. Price. And it's your boy, JG the GOAT. We are both a little under the weather. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, Price and I have been uh, recovering. Um, pretty sure Price had COVID. Oh, yeah, it, it was positive. So, I mean, I, mean, I did. But yeah. we're back somewhat. Yeah, we're. I'd and, say we're at about a solid 85% right now. I, 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 I agree with that one. Yeah, I, I give that that's one. That's about right. Yeah, actually. Something's a little different. You don't know it yet. Well, you do know it. You know it from the title. But, yeah. So, we're going to be uh, doing reactions, obviously, because, duh, it's a reaction channel. Mm -hmm. But, I didn't tell him yet. Oh, so, shit. Technically, it's just me and you, Dando. So, you, you think we should tell him? I think we should tell him. So, today, we're going to be doing some reaction to uh, your forte now, which is a lot, by the way. But, your big forte. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh yeah all right so i figure we're gonna start Ooh, with we. something support. Like support all right yeah support your voice okay what do we got here <laughs> 20 greatest wrestling finishers <laughs> of all time hell yeah dude so i figured i'd give you pumped up for the first video oh that's and dope as hell i think we'll have some fun with oh yeah so, oh man i love this i'm super pumped right now so now for future it's gonna be different like videos. I just figured we'd do something like tw like WWE type of deal because that's his like master forte. It, it really is like so, I'm I'm like a wrestling historian. I've been following wrestling since I was probably six seven years old. So you name it from the old territories all the way up to now, I I can pretty much rattle off most any random wrestling fact you can think of. So I'm I'm excited to see how they rank this because. I know what my personal favorite finishers are, so I want to see how this compares. I'm curious. With that being said, let's jump to right to the first video, baby. All right. Give us Pause when you want one, by the way. Wrestling's right. the worst part about wrestling. If you're really honest with yourself, you only watch professional wrestling for three reasons. Video packages before the match, the entrances, and the finishes. Everything in the middle is filler, filler, Ernest Miller. And while I'm 70% <laughs> sure I'm joking, I have to admit that when I first started watching wrestling back in the Attitude Era, the finishes were the main attraction for me. Leviathans of Ham hitting world-ending moves, sometimes from out of nowhere, sometimes with the action tricks, sometimes hitting their opponent's finishes on their opponent. What a time to be alive. It never got old, and the pop that always follows a finisher was and remains a hugely addictive part of wrestling fandom. Very Celebrating true. the moves that make the crowd come oh, unglued, here are the oh, 20 greatest finishers in wrestling history. All right, Number all right. 20, the bank statement. Ah yes, oh, wow. submission okay. finishes, Banks. the choice right. of the wrestling <laughs> connoisseur. Some submissions look like they don't hurt at all. Cobra Clutch. Cough, STF, cough. STF. But the bank statement looks like a oh, spine God. ender every Every yeah, time. that's pretty brutal. Locked in front of the face makes us feel the pain at home right in our noses, and the talk Banks can get on the back is truly Jesus. nightmarish. Yeah, at times, she was vicious. Charlotte, look at that! It's a simple. I remember face, that. That was an NXT takeover. Is best number nineteen. The Painful. double moonsault, and sometimes. Oh yeah, Ricochet. That dude is an is animal. Okay too. Step right up, the patron saint of silly wrestling. It's <laughs> Ricochet, who never met a movie couldn't add one more rotation to. The double moonsault is absolutely spectacular, but it ranks Jesus. a little low. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's bloody <laughs> dangerous. And two, because it's so dangerous, the person on the top rope often takes ages psyching themselves up before they hit oh. it, which can break immersion. Yeah. That being said, look at it. Oh my so God. Brutal. Yeah, that was at War Games. I remember that. The big boot. More specifically, mm. test. Test big, big boot. boot. For too oh. long now, the move has simply been a counter to an Irish whip. Charlotte does a fairly good one. Rhea Ripley does an even better one. But no one in wrestling had a big boot like test. It was like getting jousted. Oh my to death. God. They yeah. Protected it's such a shame that test died, man. He was a such a Cool oh, wrestler. It's like a mm -hmm. shotgun blast and a cannonball to the face all in one. Number 17, Jeez. the 630. Hello oh. again, Ricochet. Yeah. Aren't you Watch silly? This. The one and only looks at your 450 splashes and then fires in their general direction. Although the move has been made a lot more famous by Prince Chris Ricochet, Ricochet Puma Ricochet, yeah. the move was actually innovated by Jack Evans, who actually, looking at both side by side, hits it a little harder than Ricochet himself. The one and only hits it safer, but looks like he rolls off his opponent with less impact, whereas Jack Evans splat. Number 16, Black Mass. Some strike oh, finishes yeah. are absolutely 
shite. Well, <laughs> it's the big show, but some are damned iconic. Oh, oh from Ox Baker's infamous heart punch to oh, Kenji Muto's Baker. shining wizard to Nakamura's bomb Aye or Kinshasa if you're basic. These were all long listed, but beating them all is Black Mass. It's an out of nowhere finisher oh. up there with the best. Oh my God, God when nastiest Black roundhouse ever. Flush, you can see someone's soul oh. with their body. Few finishers are more of a convincing. Break that boy's jaw. He can yeah. even hit two people with just one oh. because he's a daddy. Number 15, the figure four leg lock. Again, oh. do you want to seem like a discerning <laughs> wrestling fan? Slide Bruh. those glasses up your nose Sammy and say, Zane. well, actually, a submission finisher requires a lot more skill. The figure four Rick is Flair, one of those yep. skilled submission finishes, and it's one of the most iconic moves of all time, oh. being the move by the man in the NWA. Oh, and Harley Race, that's old Rick NWA Flair right there. It to his daughter, who actually that was at WrestleMania New Orleans. The figure eight, and then Ric Flair yep. passed it to the nice. Miz, who perfected it. I was at that one. Key face. <laughs> but no matter who uses it, it will always be greeted with woos, because like Rick himself, it's a wrestling artifact. Number 14, the frog splash. The greatest aerial oh, finisher no, of all time, RIP my mentions. It's not just because it was the finisher of Eddie Guerrero, one of the all time greats. One of the move's strengths is how different wrestlers bring different things to it. When Ooh. Kevin Owens hits it, it has a huge amount of Ooh. impact. When RVD bet, hits boy. it, he marveled at the distance he could travel. With Montez Ford, you look at the height he achieves. With Eddie, you get his fluid, perfect form. It's a beloved move for a damn good reason. Number 13, Ooh. the sharpshooter. Uh, the most over move in Bret Canadian Hart. history. Yep. Bret Hart's use of the sharpshooter was so iconic that every time WWE ventures to the Great White North, someone has to oh. use it. It's the law. A deadly <laughs> move. That, that was the Mountie. He was a back. cool ass wrestler too. Not only <laughs> Bret Hart countless matches, Sting used it to great ovation as a Scorpion, Scorpion Death Lock. Death still mm -hmm. puts people away with it. And Shawn Michaels has a version that was so powerful it once ended a match without the opponent even submitting. Winky face. Number 12. Oh, that was the <laughs> Montreal <laughs> screw job. Okay, hang on, hang on. Do what? Okay. So, so yeah, was... let's go. Let's go back to that real quick. So that little winky face jab that he made, that was making a reference to the Montreal screw job. Okay. What's Basically, that? Bret Hart was leaving the company mm -hmm. and he had the belt. He didn't want to drop the belt. And Vince was like, bitch bet. <laughs> so basically they there's a lot of conspiracy there. Anybody who's a wrestling fan knows the whole conspiracy. There's a whole episode of Dark Side of the Ring about it. But Damn. basically, long story short, Vince was like, he's not leaving the company with my belt. So we're going to do what we got to do to take the belt off of him. So he never submitted and he made the ref ring the bell so that he could. How lose the hell? It, it, he just he just said, hey, this is what we're doing. Oh. And then. <laughs> Oh, it was bad. I'm, I'm going to have to show you that Dark Side of the Ring episode. Legs and it, the back, the sharp so, shooter one. Not see. only Bret Watch. Hart countless matches, Sting used it to great ovation as a scorpion death lock. Natalia still puts people away with it. And Shawn Michaels has a version that was so powerful it once ended right there. a match without... See that? See how the ref rung it? Right. Shawn Michaels has him in the sharpshooter. Bret never tapped. Oh. And Vince was on the sidelines by the ringside. Right. And told Earl Hebner, ring the bell. Now, after this happened... Brett gets up. Sean hauls ass to the back. Well, Hebner <laughs> hauls ass to the back. Um, Vince is standing ringside. Brett stands up, hocks the nastiest loogie in Vince's face. I mean, just a huge oh. honker in his face. And then he spells out WCW in the ring because that's where he was going. <laughs> So, yeah, oh, it was a whole uh, thing. Basically and, a middle finger. <laughs> well, long story short, it got worse than that because he went backstage, and it turns out there was a company that was actually filming a documentary at the same time, and it was called Wrestling With Shadows. And they had Brett mic'd up, and he went in the back, and he straight up knocked Vince out. Damn. Like, they, like he was like, like, Vince was trying to talk to him or whatever, and he's like naked in the shower, and he's like, I'm going to take a shower, and when I come out of there, if you're still here, I'm going to punch you out. So he literally <laughs> comes out. He's in a towel. He drives off. Vince is sitting there. Vince didn't move. And they got in each other's face. And Brett uppercutted the bejesus out of him. Jeez. I mean, knocked him off the ground, like straight starched him, and then walked out. What the fuck? Yep. Interesting. Oh, yeah. The it's, more you know. It, it's probably one of the most controversial things in wrestling history. Jesus. Pretty dope. I mean, they made a dark, dark side of the ring episode about it. Yes, so they I mean. did. <laughs> Pretty the awesome. Opponents even submitting winky face. Winky Number two, that black eye, that black eye Vince had. One of the most ubiquitous that was when it happened. In the industry. <laughs> Edge and Christian both used a spear for a time, and it was mm. fine. Then you got the best of all time, Goldberg. He used it as oh. a sort of first half of a two part finisher. Bobby Lashley, who does a whimsical little forward roll with it. Roman Reigns, who does a bloody great one. I don't even want to hear any discussion about 
about that. And a personal <laughs> favourite, Rhino Gore, the which will likely make an opponent one hundred percent full dead. Number eleven, <laughs> the Lion Tamer, the greatest oh, submission Jericho. finisher of all time. And oh I am God. not talking about the walls of Jericho. That is a Boston Crab, and it is fine. The Lion Tamer <laughs> is the walls of Jericho's terrifying Mega Death variant. And whenever Jesus. it makes a surprise appearance, yeah. like Christmas. Okay, pause next, it real quick. If the yep. move has a short now, come, look how he has the setup. He has him in the Boston Crab. So basically, bring the legs up behind the head. Right. His knee is on the back of his neck. Ow. That's where half of the pain comes from. So you're putting pressure on the neck. You're putting pressure on the lower back. That is why that move is way more devastating than a regular Boston Crab. Oh my hands God. down. And nobody else does it but Chris Jericho. That made my back hurt just thinking about it. Oh, that. it's it's vicious. It's probably one of my favorite submissions aside from like the sharpshooter that any Canadian wrestler does. Jesus. I mean, it's yeah, a Jericho no, can only never. lock it in on people who are actually able to take it, which seems like a rare few these days. But you'd be hard pressed <laughs> to find a move that's more convincing Poor as Kofi a submission Kingston. finisher <laughs> in the entire. And then he would stomp the head. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Holy. Number 10, the Doomsday Device. There oh, aren't too many tag finishes on this list. Tag team honestly, finisher. We'd be here all oh my day. God. How do you leave the <laughs> LOD slash Road Warriors Doomsday Device off the list? Answer, you don't or they'll find Big you. Boy. The delight of the fandom and the terror of the enhancement talent industry, the Doomsday Device saw many scared men flipped arse over tit for our pleasure and I can imagine fewer situations I'd least like to be in than on animal shoulders with hawks smiling at me from the yeah, top Legion right. of Doom. So maybe in a Steiner Scariest tag that team of the 90s. terrible. Time. Oh yeah, number the nine, too. the lariat. Now, hang on. I know what you're thinking. A clothesline, one of the ten mm -hmm. greatest finishes of all time. Yes, and I have four key pieces of evidence. Okay. Exhibit A: Stan Hansen's Western lariat, which oh is a God. cowboy taking your <laughs> head off. That boy, Christ. cowboy Exhibit strong. B, the buckshot lariat, which is a cowboy taking your head off your shoulders with theatrics. Sorry. Exhibit C: the clothesline from hell, which is a JBL. cowboy businessman oh burying you in a shallow <laughs> fucking grave. And Exhibit D: the rainmaker, a clothesline oh, that turned Kazuchika yeah. Okada, Okada into an intense national megastar clotheslines wrestling oh. side yeah that dude in killer. japan Number that eight, dude is a monster the elevated power bomb power bombs can be deadly they'll jangle your spine with a bonus whiplash cherry as a garnish Just elevated a power bombs are when a wrestler gets the last their ride up, as undertaker for a penny in for a pound then raises them up a bit more before bringing them down for max damage they're things of beauty and for example see the razor's edge one of the most protected finishes of all time taker's last ride which looks like it sent triple h to meet his <laughs> jesus and of course the <laughs> spirit bomb the sex Sexiest move from wrestling's sexiest man. Number seven, <laughs> the tombstone pile oh, yeah. This move would bloody kill you if Taker actually hit it, compress your neck, and leave your spine looking like oh a shaken packet God. of Pringles, you know, like it did when Steve Austin accidentally took that, one summer okay, 97. Okay, pause. Yep. As such. Okay, 1997, Owen Hart did that. Now, if you look, play it. You no, know, like now, it did when pause. Steve Austin Okay, right there, he messed up. Austin landed directly. On his head. Yeah, his neck is broken. Broken right there. He had a stinger. He couldn't feel his arms. So, like, if you watch oh, that oh. match. Oh, yeah. Like, Owen Hart messed that up big time. But, yeah, dropped him right on his head. Had a stinger. He couldn't feel his arms. And then they ended up having to, like, finish the match right there. Holy shit. Yeah. It is. That's why, like, for a while, it was one of those moves where it was, like, unspoken. Like, you just don't do it. But right. Undertaker, he did it safe enough that. It was kind of like grandfathered in, like Undertaker can do it. It's okay. Right. But any other wrestler, no go. If you did it like you were borderline, you might get fired. <laughs> there were certain moves I mean, that were restricted. Like it was so unsafe, you weren't allowed to do them. There was like an unspoken rule like, hey, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Pile driver was specifically one of them for this exact reason. Yeah, I bet that would be snapping people's necks and Accidentally shit. took one at SummerSlam 97. As such, it's also one of the fakest moves in wrestling. No one even slightly believes Undertaker is hitting the move, or that Kane is hitting the move, or the Young Bucks, or Akada. But also, absolutely no one cares. Because it's <laughs> over, and it will never not be over. It's acted That's as fair. a punctuation mark to some of the most iconic WrestleMania matches of all time, and it cemented its place in history. Number six... The F5. And oh, now, yep. some very believable violence. The F5 <laughs> is the <laughs> world's Brock, sweatiest boy. mountain oh, putting you God. on his shoulders and throwing you at the ground right on your tiny face. Like Brock himself, <laughs> the move came out of nowhere and instantly rocketed to the top of the industry, feeling like it had been here the whole it's time. Savage, cowboy. powerful, dominating, and would be higher on the list if the F5 wasn't also indirectly responsible for creating the parody FU, which would become the most overrated finisher of all time. Except yep. maybe the leg drop. Oh, oh no. <laughs> God, my 
options. The people's number elbow. five, the one winged angel. Kenny oh. Omega likes video games. I'm not sure if that was clear from the fact he named his finisher after the villain from Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> anyway, yes, giant nerd Kenny Omega has one oh, of the yeah. most protected moves in wrestling. Literally, yep. one Jesus. of the greatest feuds in pro wrestling history was built, built around the move yep. and how if he hit it, it's game over. It's like the perfect plex yep. on steroids. Both are slams okay. Pause that right their there. Opponent in an instant. Okay, so quick thing on Kenny Omega. Amazing, amazing wrestler. Wrestled in Japan, wrestles for AEW. Well, right. he did. He has diverticulitis. He can't wrestle right now. But the one winged angle, one winged angel, it's one of those moves. If he does it, no one kicks out of it. I'm talking never. Like Why? ever. Because it's such a it's such a powerful move in the wrestling business that if someone were to kick out of it, it would lose its luster. That's why when they say like certain protected ah, moves, okay. like if you have a move that's protected like that, like the tombstone for Undertaker and certain stuff like that, it's it's kind of an understood and a respect thing that if he hits it, you don't kick out of it. Fair and b besides the fact that the one, one winged angel, he basically has you in like a half Nelson and then drives you on your head, oh. kind of. But um, <clears throat> that, that reference that they made to the perfect plex, yeah. go back about two seconds. Feuds in I'm going to explain something really cool about it. Okay. History was built around the move and how if he hit it, it's game over. It's like the perfect right here. Okay. Now, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning, amazing, amazing athlete, passed away in the early 2000s. Right there, he is doing the perfect plex on the big show, a.k.a. the Giant, when right. he was at his heaviest, oh my at 486 God. pounds. Jesus. Now, if you watch the move, he doesn't jump and assist him. He lifts him. Dead weight, On steroids, both are and throws him over. <laughs> oh, God, let's do that again. He hit it. It's game over. It's like the perfect plex on steroids. That's a both big boy. Seven foot four, four hundred eighty-six pounds. Threw him over like nothing. Like everything Kurt Henning ever did. That's why they called him Mister Perfect. He was one of the most technical wrestlers ever. Jesus. And when he did that. I saw that live. That was on Monday Night Nitro back in way early 90s. That's right. when they had the Monday Night Wars thing going on. I was probably maybe 10, 11 at the time. And I remember that, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> nobody picks up the giant like that. I guess not. And he just freaking just, yeet. <laughs> picked up a freaking Mack truck at that point. Yeah. And, I mean, see, he did it to Ric Flair, and that's how, I think that's when he won the world title, if I'm well, not mistaken. While Mr. Perfect suplex them, Omega nails them with a driver spiking their oh, shoulders down with a grueling swing. Number four, the burning hammer. If you want oh, to talk mega death moves, only to Jerry. A few people can take without an instant murder investigation afterwards. <laughs> Fewer moves are as infamous as the burning hammer. Hammer. It's a reverse Death Valley driver emphasis on the death, innovated by Kenta Kabashi, where he gets you up for a torture rack before dropping you on your bean. It was simply unkickoutable until Brian Kendrick hit one on Kota Ibushi and he kicked out, and the internet was torn between marking out for a banned super finisher suddenly being seen in WWE or raging that someone kicked out of the thing. Number three, the cutter. You can't oh. make me choose between oh. the RKO and the diamond cutter. You just can't make me. It's the second greatest surprise finisher in the world, and no matter how much much of a Goldberg you are, you can still <laughs> eat canvas at a moment's notice. The unpredictability <laughs> and tension created by the move being able to strike suddenly and on anyone has been the foundation of Randall Keith's character for almost his entire career. The move deserves a Hall of Fame spot all of its I own. Really hope also, a special oh, shout out to the greatest bit. tag team finisher of all time, the Elevated Cutter, also known 3D. as the 3D. <laughs> Number two, the Stunner. Has mm. any move ever produced a bigger pop than a well-timed stunner genuinely if austin ever appeared on wwe tv and at no point did he hit someone with a stunner that would be regarded as an instant heel turn it's so perfectly Fair. designed for a pop as well the kick to the gut lasts just long enough to get you excited before the stunner brings Poof. you out of your seat whether or not it's the coolest finisher of all time or was just performed by the coolest wrestler of all time is a debate you can have but ultimately does it matter it's just cool and this entry what do you think is the number one okay so at this point mm... It's going to be a tough one because they've already done the RKO. They've done the stunner. Um, I don't know none of them. So okay. So, here. I mean, the the only other, the only, oh, no, because the sweet chin music or the super kick wouldn't be that. Um, hmm. Damn. It's, it's probably going to be a submission, though, if I had to guess. Submission? I think okay. so. 
who oh. wouldn't be complete without a shout out to the Eclipse, Ember Moon's top rope stunner, which is also utterly rad. And number one, sweet Oh, Shin okay, music. it was a super kick. If you thought the stunner should be here, okay, fair enough. <laughs> you also think the super kick has been diluted by being a similar oh, for one. Dolph Ziggler, the Young Bucks, and many more, then I understand <laughs> that too. But also, no, it's the coolest finisher of all time. It's brutal, surprising, can be here on anyone, oh. guarantees oh, a my master God. pop, yep. has a great lead in if Michaels decides to tune up the band. It's completely convincing as a match finisher. It is just the best. <laughs> it's the best. That's our list. Did huh. I miss you? That was that was fun. I, I enjoyed. Okay, so I agreed with about about eighty percent of that list. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The only ones I would probably disagree with, just because they're not my personal favorites, would be the the Burning Hammer. Now, I mean, I'm a fan of Japanese wrestling. I'm gonna have to show you some Japanese death matches. For sure. That that stuff will absolutely like probably mentally scar you. Those are, oh, those are violent. <laughs> God dang. But they're they're super cool. Like uh, Terry Funk and Mick Foley had a really good one. Uh, uh, I think Antonio Inoki had another one, but a lot of the older guys in Japan did some really cool stuff with that. They have like explosions and stuff. Damn. Oh yeah, yeah, they have pyro in the ring, and like the ring will blow up after a certain time. What the fuck? Yeah, the, the really good ones. Yeah, <laughs> I'm at the show. Up. Yeah, like legit. Like there's explosions around the ring. What the hell? It's super cool. Awesome. But, um, yeah, overall that was a that was a really solid list. Uh, I, I definitely enjoy uh wrestle talk these guys they're very informative with whenever they because i've watched a few videos i haven't watched this one right but i've watched a few with like their um i think they had like top 10 um wrestling debuts or um like top 10 um surprise entrances for the royal rumble yeah they had a like good that. bit i just figured the finishers be oh yeah story. the finishers are great because i mean i, I love them obviously and i mean right. i've been a wrestling fan my whole life so just looking back on some of those i forget about a few of them like a lot of those wrestlers I forget about because, like, for example, the guy they mentioned, Brian Kendrick, the one that did the Burning Hammer. Yeah. That match that they did, it that was on a show that WWE used to have. It was called 205 Live, and it was mainly just cruiserweights. It was basically 205 and under. Oh, So great. it was all lightweight guys. Okay. So everything they did was high-flying, like, uh, guys like Ricochet, yeah. stuff like that. And they were super entertaining. And Brian Kendrick's been in wrestling a long time. Like, I remember him, like, way back in the day. And... Everything that dude does is so over the top. So seeing him again, that was kind of neat. But overall, that was a really solid list. And it was just, it was fun to like think back whenever I saw a lot of that stuff because it's been so long. Right. Because I like going back in that catalog and like watching some of that old stuff. So that kind of stirred up some stuff that I hadn't thought about in a while. That was pretty fun. Cool deal. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, this type of video, please leave a comment down below. I want to know what you like, what you don't like. And if you want to recommend something like this, it doesn't have to be wrestling by itself. It could be totally just something random like that. Like UFC knockouts or, you know, uh, car wrecks or I don't know. I'm just spitting out random fa random things. But also, while you're down there, hit the subscribe button and like button all that fun stuff. You yeah. Know. I mean, you know, this, so. this, is, this was fun. This was a change of pace I did not expect. So, you know, this was something cool that, you know, it's nice to change things up instead oh, of, you know, just doing straight music. You know, it's like to kind of branch out and see, you know, kind of tread the water and see what other things we can react to aside from artists. So definitely, definitely, if you guys have an affinity for something that you really like and they have a collection like this, throw it out there. Even the most obscure stuff, hell, it may it may pique our interest. You even never know. Ca even cat videos. Yeah, yeah, hey, you know, it's whatever. It's whatever. Like, we're about it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but anyway... I'm your boy, Mr. Price. And it's your boy, JG the Goat. Thank you guys again so much for joining us here on Roommate Reaction Season 3. And on that note, what you gonna do? No, all right, no. <laughs> all right, no, switch no, it no, up. No, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> no, I had to get my inner Hulk Hogan out because I was, I was so stoked, man. But uh, <clears throat> I hit you guys with the outro. <clears throat> that was a legit clear my throat because I'm still sick. <laughs> It'd be like that. <clears throat> all roommates, all reactions. All the time. You already know. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And on that, we are... Out of here. All roommates, all reactions, all the time. Check this out. Roommate reaction. You already know. Yes, sir.